Welcome to your weekly ticket. Award season is finally here. So in honor of the upcoming 78th annual Golden Globe Awards, we're taking a look back at some of our all-time favorite Golden Globe award-winning performances. Here to talk to us about his favorite award-winning performances is film critic Wilson Morales. All right, Wilson, what is your number one favorite performance in contention for an award this year? I would say Daniel Kaluuya for his performance as Chairman Fred Hampton in Judas and the Black Messiah. You go in there and, you know, there was initial talk about, oh, you got a, a British actor playing an American icon that some people remember it and not everybody knows enough about. But I think when you watch the movie, you know, he embodies that character. He plays it with such strength and ferocity that you can't help but be captivated by every time he's on screen uttering those words, especially if you saw the trailer that you want to know more about Fred Hampton. And we do not know enough about Fred Hampton, you know, especially in a time when it's coming out during Black History Month. Perfect time for that movie to come out for all those that want to know more about the individual. And remember, he was 21 years old when he died. And although Kalua is obviously older than, than uh, Hampton was, he still brings enough of a performance that captivates you compared to the other performances you saw in a category. Wow. And even won you over in the trailer. That's impressive. Yeah, That's I think word. when nice. people see the trailer, people are people want to see it because, you know, this is a part of history that's not been told on, you know, on the screen before. Now let's look back over past winners. What's an actor or actress performance that stands out to you as being iconic or memorable? I would say Mickey Rourke's win for The Wrestler. You know, when I looked at the category and I looked at who's won in the past, you know, you've had actors going in that were a cinch. And then here's Mickey Rourke, who that was his quote unquote comeback role. If you look over his career in the 80s, he was on fire, you know, with the Pope of Greenwich Village, you know, the other films that he's done. But then he, he was out of the spotlight for almost a decade. Here's a role that he did that basically put him back on the spotlight. And, you know, and I think when he got the Globe nomination and won, you know, it started this wave of like, OK, you know, He's coming back on a scene, you know, the Globe win led to getting a SAG nomination, I believe, and he got an Oscar nomination. He didn't win the Oscar, but the but the Golden Globes win is what put him on the map with a lot of people who had not seen him in a long time. It was an independent film released by Fox Searchlight, so it wasn't like it was in 3,000 screens. So the Globe win put the film and him back on the map. So now as someone who covers award shows and predicts winners, have you noticed and the acting performances over the years have evolved? And if so, in what ways? You know, when it comes to the glows, it's always topsy turvy. You know, there's always an argument as to who gets snubs and who didn't get nominated and who got overlooked. As a black individual, you know, there's a, we always want certain actors recognized, you know, because it is a TV award show, in which, you know, folks from the TV and the film side are recognized. And, you know, there'll be a year where like an Ava DuVernay who's a director, but there are actors who gets recognized. And then there'll be a year where no one gets recognized. I always believe that, you know, it's a topsy-turvy year with the Globes, you know, because, you know, we don't know who the voters are and it's a ratings driven show that, you know, you can always remember the, the people that got nominated. I remember the year Matt Damon got nominated for comedy, you know, for The Martian, you know, because I think they, just want, they wanted him in and he didn't, he didn't make the top five cut in a dramatic category, so they threw him in the comedy section, you know? So it, so if you say evolving, yes, because they make up the rules as it goes along. Yeah, he didn't really even make Mars that funny, and that's a funny planet. Man. Yes. You, know, <laughs> you always wonder, like, who, who, who makes the cut in what category, you know? It's like, yeah. especially when they want you to get in. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, Wilson, thank you so much. Where can people find you? You can find me over at blackfilmandtv.com, which is the same words you use on social media apps. Awesome, man. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Available to watch on demand is Minari. If you're here with us for the first time, please stand. What a beautiful family. Glad you're here. Minari follows a Korean-American family that moves to a tiny Arkansas farm in search of their own American dream. The family home changes completely with the arrival of their sly, foul-mouthed, but incredibly loving grandmother. Amidst the instability and challenges of this new life in the rugged Ozarks, Minari shows the undeniable resilience of family and what really makes a home. And also available to watch on demand is Wrong Turn. But anyone who goes up there, what is this place? They don't come back.
backwoods terror and never jangling suspense meet when Jen and a group of friends set out to hike the Appalachian Trail. Despite warnings to stick to the trail, the hikers stray off course and cross into land inhabited by the Foundation, a hidden community of mountain dwellers who use deadly means to protect their way of life. Suddenly under siege, Jen and her friends seem headed to the point of no return unless Jen's father can reach them in time. All right, well, that's it for today, but leave us a comment and let us know what you'll be watching this week. I'm Kale, and I'll see you next time.